I'm Peter Berninger. I'm here at the Capital Audio Fest, and I'm here with Mike Beard. Hi, Mike. How are you? Doing good. Mike, you have an outrageous system here. Tell us about this. What is going on? Well, we've got con electric organ pipes from the 50s and 60s. Yeah. And a Bogan twin channel PA amp from 1939. And a 1948 Bogan mono amp, which is used to drive the mid high frequency pipes. Now you have uh, conventional loudspeaker drivers beneath the horns. How is this set up? There's four six by nine inch paper edge drivers per per pipe box section. per yeah. pipe section. Okay, yes, for a total of 28 six by nine inch drivers. And now, so you have the these six by nines are in all the boxes. So you have one, two, three, four, five, eight boxes. Correct. Right. Making 28 six by nine inch speakers. My goodness gracious. No tweeters, no woofers, no crossovers. Okay. All the frequency selection is done by the length and diameter of the pipe. Oh. These speakers in the boxes are basically motors. Oh, okay. When a bass note is played, because it's gonna it's, find it's gonna find the, the yeah, pipe that the is pipe tu is. they're tuned to fundamental frequencies the musical scale. Now how did you figure this out? Con Organ Company did it. Oh, mm. darn. They used them for their electronic organs oh. in churches and mm -hmm. cathedrals and stuff. When were these manufactured? What circa are these? Late fifties. Mm -hmm. All the way up into the sixties. Where was the organ company located? Elkhart, Indiana. I'll be they also make trombones, they made horn instruments. Mm -hmm. You know, C-O-N-N. -N. You might have seen that on brass instruments. Okay, viewers, let's take a also look. Also the tuners, the piano tuners. and Look at these, I'll be a son of a gun. But see, listen to this. They're, each one is tuned. You're right. Well, that's because they're all a different length. Yep. Yeah. In diameter. Yeah. Well, that's so uh, the, the real trick is not to load the mid-high pipes with bass frequencies. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? By running a separate amplifier, mm -hmm. so that you can just turn the bass down a bit. Mm -hmm. It'll mechanically roll off. Obviously, highs are not going to come pouring out of the bass pipes. Mm -hmm. Mechanically, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. But the bass notes will try to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. modulate in these mid-high pipes and wind up sounding congested. Mm -hmm. So you just use a separate amp with uh, less bass. Now, where do you have this set up? Is this set up in your home? Mm -hmm. Do you have this in the living room? No, it's no? in the laundry room. In the laundry room. <laughs> 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 you can't you can't use it all at once. I'm getting a visual about that. It's uh, uh, a yeah, wash and dry uh, organ music. In the furnace in the center. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> what you usually do is put these in front of one another. Okay. Yeah. You can I, I actually, I'm, you can yeah. actually use the mid high pipes without hooking them up. The energy from the bass pipes will will vibrate parasitically, sy vibrate, yeah. sympathetically vibrate them, and and you'll have plenty of highs. My goodness! Well, let's uh, in a room of this size, I had to yeah, get everything going. Yeah, pull it, pull it, pull out all the stops. Yes. No pun intended. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, I can't help myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, let's do some listening. I'm Peter Berninger reporting from the Capitol Audio Fest. It's 2012 outside of Washington D.C. And we're listening and looking at the most unique audio system that this critic has ever heard or seen. Here we go. Thank uh you. -huh.